Please let me go. What's it gonna be, Jake? We've been comparing the guns of the Fallout series of post-apocalyptic video games to their real-world counterparts, and today we're going to examine the Handmade Rifle. The Fallout universe is brutal, and the Nuka World DLC for Fallout 4 is even more ruthless. At the risk of spoiling the story for that one gamer out there who hasn't yet completed it, there really aren't any great choices to finish the Nuka World main quest. But Nuka World comes with one of my most favoritest guns in the game. The Handmade Rifle is ubiquitous in Nuka World and is relatively powerful. The 7.62 ammo is widely available in Nuka World, but is not found elsewhere in the game except for sale by vendors. Like most guns in Fallout 4, the Handmade Rifle has a wide range of mods that can be a applied, but what really makes this rifle shine are the two legendary rifles found in Nuka World, the Splatter Cannon and the Problem Solver. Both are imbued with the Furious Legendary effect, which increases the damage done with each consecutive hit on the same target. When this effect is combined with the Rifleman, Concentrated Fire, and Grim Reaper Sprint perks, it absolutely dismantles enemies. Obviously, the Handmade Rifle is modeled after the Kalashnikov series of fighting rifles in the real world. This is no great stretch considering the original AK-47 was introduced at roughly the same time as the Fallout universe timeline began diverging from our own history. The Avtomat Kalashnikov model of 1947 was designed by Senior Sergeant Mikhail T. Kalashnikov in 1947 after he was wounded while fighting Nazis in the Soviet's Great Patriotic War, and it was officially adopted by the Red Army in 1949. It was chambered in 7.62 by 39 mm and featured a milled steel receiver. Ten years later, the AKM was adopted. AKM stands for Avtomat Kalashnikov Moderniz... Moder... Moder... You know what? This would be a lot easier if Vlad, one of the TFB writers, pronounced this for me. Alright, thanks Vlad. There's no way I would have gotten that right. AKM stands for, in English, Modernized Automatic Kalashnikov, and along with other improvements, the AKM was made of a lighter, stamped steel receiver which was easier to manufacture and weighed substantially less. The AK is reasonably simple to operate and it is easy to disassemble for maintenance, so it is quick to clean in the field. It has a somewhat undeserved reputation for being unstoppable. While it is a generally reliable weapon, in real world conditions it is no more reliable than other modern rifles like the AR, FNC, or FAL. We don't know for sure how many AK pattern rifles exist in the world because many have been manufactured in primitive locations like Khyber Pass where they didn't exactly keep detailed inventories, but it is estimated that 100 million Kalashnikov pattern rifles have been made. It's possible that more Kalashnikov pattern rifles have been manufactured than any other type of firearm. There are dozens of variants with folding stocks, longer or shorter barrels, different muzzle devices, and a host of other deviations from the core design. They may be fitted with bayonets and folding stocks and silencers, night vision, reflex sights, magnified scopes, and all sorts of other accessories. Everything but a bottle opener. If only there was some way to open this Gwinnett Ale. Wait, no. Real world AKs come with a bottle opener too. If your urge to know more is intensifying, read The Gun by CJ Chivers. But for now, enough with that nerd shit. let's shoot some machine guns. If you want to shoot a real full auto AK in the Phoenix area and you don't have tens of thousands of caps to spend on one, you go to the Scottsdale Gun Club. All right, on the AKM type rifle, this is the selector switch and dust cover. It also performs the function of preventing the charging handle from coming back far enough to chamber around. To load the rifle, you insert the front of the magazine, catch this little nubby part on the inside of the receiver, rock back until it locks. Rotate the selector lever to auto or semi. Pull the charging handle, release, around is chambered, it's ready to fire in semi in the down position and full auto in the middle position. And yep, as soon as you feel that indentation, you're good to go.
What's it like to shoot a real AK? Look, shooting stuff is fun, and AKs are some of the most fun guns to shoot in semi or full auto because there's lots of stuff slapping around and a good deal of commotion without producing so much recoil as to be distracting. Practical factors aside, it's just the right amount of noise and recoil to be a really fun experience. Practically speaking though, the AKM does produce more recoil and muzzle rise than the AK-74 or the AR-15. It's not so much as to be unusable. I was able to keep most of my rounds on the bad guy with short bursts, but shooting the same target at the same distance with a 5.56 or 5.45 rifle would mean more rounds on target in the same time. So how close is the game gun to the real world gun? Well, the obvious difference is that everything is backwards. The charging handle, ejection port, and selector switch are all on the left side of the rifle in the game version. This sort of thing is somewhat common in video games, presumably because the designers want visually interesting bits to be visible while playing in the first person. But it generally feels about right. The tone of the gunshots sounds similar to a real 7.62x39 AK. But it doesn't recoil much in the game. Shooting in full auto, the muzzle does rise, but it's straight up and not up and to the right like the real world rifle. The damage model is typically ridiculous. Video games rarely get this right. Outwardly, games often show way more blood and gore than you usually see from bullet wounds in the real world, but they also often require more hits than seems realistic. Without armor, one headshot with almost any bullet oh, no. design and almost any caliber from almost any gun should instantly stop almost any mortal human being. Likewise, a couple rifle rounds in the thoracic cavity will tend to quickly stop any human not wearing armor. What about the name Handmade Rifle, though, and that crazy shovel stock that's often seen in rifles in the game? The name Handmade Rifle seems to imply that it was, well, made by hand. You can't make an AK by hand, can you? That has to be pure fantasy, right? Not only is that part fairly realistic, it seems clear to me that Bethesda was riffing on a real-world project when they made the Handmade Rifle. Back in 2012, a member on the forum northeastshooters.com got inspired by a photo of an AK that had a shovel for a stock, so he drank a ton of vodka and built an AK from a shovel. No, seriously, I'll post the link in the comments, it's a really good read if you have the time. He bent the receiver from the shovel blade and used the shovel handle for the stock. Maybe it's not a coincidence he's from Massachusetts. We could dig and find lots of inconsistencies between the game gun and real-world Kalashnikovs, but ultimately, it's just a game and it's not worth going full Rain Man on it. Fallout isn't Arma, it isn't intended to be a combat simulation, and in that context, they got the AK pretty close. Add in a little alternate timeline history and a healthy dose of willing suspension of disbelief, and I'm just fine with a handmade rifle. Between my Krinkov-style splatter cannon and the Deliverer, I hardly ever use any other guns in the game. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed watching this video. I had a blast making it, and I can't wait for Fallout 76 to come out, no matter what the haters say. If you have the time, please head over to Ventura Munitions' website and see what they have in stock. They've got a lot of great deals on ammunition, including 7.62 by 39 millimeter. As always, leave a comment, ask questions. I like to hear what you guys think on these subjects, and I'm always looking for ways that we can improve our videos. Have a great day.